Do you want to know the three dividend stocks that I'm buying this month, May 2024? Stick with me as I discuss the three different options with different attributes and lots of diversification. Let's get into it. Okay, now very quickly, this is a fantastic asset management company. It's a relatively new company. And you'll see that it also has a very nice dividend yield. Now the dividend yield here, as you can see, is tracking the orange line here, which is the EPS on a normalized scale. And then this white dividend payout line is tracking the earnings for the company. Now this is part of the intention from the management team to basically pay out as much as they can in dividends. Now what that does mean is over time if the earnings do go down the dividends will go down but also if the earnings continue to go up as they are expected to go up into the future then the dividends will also be expected to go up in the future as well. Now a couple of uh, key points here. Number one, it's got a very small market cap of about $3 billion dollars. And it has a fantastic uh, long-term debt-to-capital ratio of only 2%. So this is fantastic. Now in this particular case, given how new the company is, uh, I'm not too worried about the analyst scorecard down below. But what I do want to look at is a couple of key metrics. Now, one interesting point here is the blended PE of 9.95. And I've just noticed that I've got this uh, set to... Australian dollars so we'll reset this to US dollars but it doesn't change the, the blended PE here of 9.95 so we're talking about a, a company with a PE of 10 yes it is a company that does have the potential for some fairly volatile swings here in the earnings but with earnings projected to grow by 10%, 22%, and 18%, strong double-digit growth in coming years, with the dividends uh, set to track that as well, you can hopefully very easily see that with a starting yield of nearly 8% if we buy today, that the yield on costs in several years could be very attractive indeed. Now, very, very quickly then, we're going to switch over to performance, but given how new the company is, it's very hard to, to get a very good fix on this and just how effective this has been as a, a growth machine. Now, the, the price itself has actually gone down quite a bit. But if we invested 2500 US dollars in 2021, we would have had a, a reasonable payout here and a reasonable amount of shares or reinvestment of those dividends. Now, perhaps most interestingly is when we switch over to the forecasting. Now, if we were to use a, a 10 times PE here, we would have a, a relatively low level of gains and I say relatively low level here because even if we maintained a 10 times price to earnings multiple but the earnings have increased as much as analysts expect we would still be talking about a nearly 30 percent annualized rate of return now if the price to earnings multiple expands to 17 times multiple, then we're talking about a potential for 50% total annualized rate of returns. Now it's hard to say how likely this is because we have very limited numbers of analysts actually providing estimates and forecasts out that far. But it's also important to look at the stability of the estimates. So for 2024, over the last uh, six months, they've changed from a about $1.30 for 2024, it's through to about one thirty nine, so an increase in the estimates. Uh, 2025, the estimates have changed from about one sixty four through to one sixty nine, so relatively constant. Uh, and two years out to 2026, estimates have changed and dropped from about $2.24 down to $2, but still representing quite a strong growth that year. Now, is it likely to hit this? 
No, it's not guaranteed and it's not certainly likely, but it is trading at a very low uh, blended PE. Now, with a very strong Latin American focus, Patricia Investments is likely to add some diversification to many portfolios. It certainly does with mine. It gives me some regional diversification. Now, it's also interesting to see, is this blended PE a reasonable PE? And to answer that question, I'm going to just add in some other asset managers such as Brookfield. Currently trading at a 28 times post earnings multiple. Aries Management Group trading at an extremely high 37 times multiple. And perhaps Apollo. Apollo trading at a very reasonable here, 16 times multiple. So I think we, we certainly have the opportunity here with Patricia Investments to capture some very strong upside and in the meantime capturing some nice dividend yields that will power through our portfolios. And so this is one of my top picks today in May 2024, and it's one of the positions I've been adding to reasonably strongly. Okay, so another stock that I've been adding to is the Canadian stock for ATCO. It's listed on the Canadian exchange as ACO.X. Now, it's important to note this uh, is a primarily in the utilities. It's listed as a multi-utility, uh, roughly $5 billion market cap, uh, and a reasonable amount of debt here. Now, it does have a reasonable dividend yield of 4.8%. Now, one of the fascinating things about this company is it actually owns a huge chunk of the Canadian utilities. Now, you could own Canadian utilities directly, which has a higher dividend yield, or you can own this company. Now, the, the stake that ATCO has in Canadian utilities is roughly equivalent, or the valued roughly the whole value of ATCO, but it also, ATCO also has other assets as well, and so it's basically like buying the same stake in Canadian Utilities plus adding on other areas for growth. Now, as we begin to look into this then, it's important to note that the uh, two-year analyst scorecard is reasonable, as is the one year, there's some misses, it's not as clean as I like to see, but it's reasonably good. When we look at the performance against the SPY, we see that it has returned a comparable uh, nearly 10% just under the SPY over the last 20 years. But when we look at the total dividends reinvested, we can see it's, it's looking at about two and a half times the income from the SPY. And so I think that's been a, a powerful driver of returns. And as we look at the forecasting, I'm going to switch this to the normal multiple that it's traded at over the last five years of about 12.14. And I want to look down here at the analyst estimates. We can see uh, for 2024, the analyst estimates have been improving over the last six months as they have for 2025 uh, and as they have also for 2026. Now, if we project it out to the end of 2026 then, and the prices uh, maintain or return to the 12.14 times price to earnings and multiple and the analyst estimate of $4.08 for the earnings are accurate, we could look at a 12% rate of return. Now, this is a slow and steady grower. It's not a company that I expect to go a huge, huge way and grow in a huge way in the next several years. But it is a very stable, steady company. It's got a good starting dividend yield. It's going to grow that dividend slowly and durably with time. If we go back to the performance tab in Fast Graphs, we can see that the dividend growth has been double digits uh, for several years, but has also grown more recently only at about 3% dividend growth per year. Although there's certainly, when we look at the chart, there's certainly space here 
in terms of a dividend payout ratio of only 50%, there's certainly space to grow that dividend at a much faster pace. But they're also plowing some of this money back into other investments that will actually continue to grow this company and their earnings long term. So this is my slow grower that I've been adding to in May 2024. Okay, now the third position that I have been adding to is FIDUS Investment Corp. FDUS. Now this is a business development company, so you'll notice that the dividend yield is shown here. Now the dividend yield there uh, isn't represented as well on fast graphs because of the number of special dividends that the company pays out. Now there's a couple of uh, quick notes here as well. Number one, uh, for performance, comparing this to this SPY, the S&P 500, you'll notice that since this uh, company went public in 2012, the performance has been pretty much bang on the same as the SPY with dividends reinvested. The key difference though is here in the total dividends reinvested, and you'll see the income has been about six times higher than the SPY which is a considerable amount of income for the same performance over the same period of time. Now, as a business development company, it's not like Maine or ARCC, Aries Capital, or Main Street Capital. It doesn't have that sort of consistency in the dividend payments over time, with time. Uh, instead, you see that uh, the dividend payments fluctuate, uh, and they do drop down, for example, in these periods held steady for several years, uh, and then increased, like many other BDCs in the last couple of years post-pandemic. Uh, and over time, I would expect the dividend payments to slip down again. Now, another important point here as well is it's a quarterly payment. It's not a an annual payment. And here as well, even as we slip down into the quarterly payments, we see variation in the quarterly payments as well, considerable variation. So again, just noting that this is not a, and so here the first payment in 2024, uh, 65 cents for the quarter, lower than the uh, the last quarter last year at 80 cents per share. So it's not a, a consistent dividend payer, but it is a strong performer. Uh, it has a strong NAV performance, which fast graphs here unfortunately doesn't represent well. But it is also a, a reasonable company here in terms of analyst expectations and hitting analyst expectations. So uh, two years out, it uh, runs at about a 75% hit, 25% beat. One year out, about a 58% hit and a 25% beat. So reasonable returns. In terms of the forecasting then, if I switch this to the normal multiple, because it does tend to, to run at a lower multiple than 15, we can see analysts are expecting a decline in the earnings in the next several years. Now, fired us does tend to pay out, as I said, the variable dividend based on their earnings. So they basically pay out on most of their earnings as a dividend. And we can see that there's six and then five analysts supporting 2025. So if they maintain this normal price to earnings ratio, we'll be looking at a total annualized rate of return of about 11.7. And most of that is going to be the dividends. And as you can see here, in fact, we'd actually be expecting a very, very marginal um, decrease in the, the the value of the investment if we exclude the dividends. So most of this rate of return is going to be purely sucking the dividends out. And so in that case, it's quite a different value proposition to the other companies that I'm adding to. And, and as you can tell from this as well, they are very different companies that I'm adding to here today in May 2024, and they're all serving the portfolio in different ways. Now, even as I describe that as well, you should be able to understand and realize then that each one might serve different investors differently. Now, if you are looking 
at Fidus Investment Corp. And this is FDUS is not a business development company that you've come across before. This is a video that will go into more explanation and more details about why I have selected this investment over Main Street Capital, which is one of my core holdings for a long time. Even though this doesn't appear to have a very strong dividend yield here on fast graphs, this video will explain the, the reasoning and the rationale using much deeper details and data than is available on the fast graph platform. So I recommend you go and watch this video next.